Hello everybody. I am David van Hartskamp and I am an entrepreneur. It is my passion to work with new ideas and turn them into products and innovations. I see a lot of overlap between scientists and entrepreneurs. To become and to remain successful as an entrepreneur, you have to innovate. Actually, when I think about it, you have to stay in touch with the scientist within yourself. You have to stay curious, want to find out new things and develop new products and new services. Beforehand, you don't know if a product that you have developed will be successful. So you have to be able to deal with disappointment and insecurity. But you also know that wonderful feeling when something you developed yourself turns out to be a success. I've been told that scientists know these emotions very well too. Scientists these days are learning how to run their research project like a business. They are directing their gaze to the outside world, looking for new support, new partners and new uh, sponsors. Scientists are turning into entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs in research, knowledge and innovation. Shortly after I got my master's degree in pharmaceutical sciences, I started my first company. This business grew to be quite successful. In 2012, we received an award for fast-moving, fast-growing companies, awarded to us by the Dutch Financial Times at Financial Dagblad. This was nice recognition for all the hard work, but it also marked the moment in uh, my life that I wanted to uh, move on. The entrepreneur in me wanted to move on. I wanted to feel that great energy again that flows when you work on a new ID. I was lucky to find a new CEO for my company so I could take the time to look further and on, to find out on which business adventure I wanted to embark. In this period, something unexpected and unpleasant happened. While training in the gym, I felt a little lump in my lower left arm. Somewhat startled, I went to my GP. She managed to calm me down. It was only a lump of fat. She could excite it herself. Some local anesthetics went in and then the scalpel and she tried to get it out. But it was much harder to excite than she had anticipated. So after a lot of cutting and pulling, she finally got the lump out, but it didn't look like a lump of fat at all. I should not worry, she said, but she would send it to the lab for analysis anyway. And of course I did worry. So after two weeks of nail biting, finally the phone rang. It was my GP. She started with, hello David, don't be scared, but well, of course she scared me there a bit. But fortunately, it wasn't cancer. So I was happy to hear that, but it was something else. It turned out to be sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a very rare autoimmune disease that causes infections in your body's organs. It's a, it are granulomas and accumulations of white blood cells. I was lucky to have it in a relatively innocent spot in my body, namely my arm, but if you have it in your more vital organs, you could die from it. So this was the moment I really wanted to find out all about this disease. I even took out my old medical textbooks and of course I looked on the internet. I found a lot of information, but I didn't find what I was looking for. I wanted to know who are the researchers who, who are doing research into sarcoidosis? What are the scientists looking into at the moment? What if the disease will return later in life? Or what if my son will also get it? Are the new treatments being developed? What are the latest insights? I didn't get answers to those questions, which I found quite frustrating because I didn't only want to follow the developments in the research of sarcoidosis, I also wanted to support scientists who do research in this field financially and I would like to contribute to them with my own expertise. I didn't know where to go. I ran into a wall. This triggered the entrepreneur in me. Why isn't there a central spot online where scientists talk about their work to normal people like myself? I want to know what they're doing. I want to get to know the scientists behind the publication. 
Why is there no place where I can indicate that I want to combine forces with scientists or that I want to support a scientific project? Here was my new business idea. I decided to fill that gap. I decided to create a platform where society can get in touch with science, a place where demand and supply meets. I had some work to do. September last year, the first version of our platform was ready and Flintwave.com was launched. We focused on crowdfunding. Scientists could present their research project on our platform and the public could support these projects by donating money. One of the first projects was the project Printing New Ears. Researcher and physician Ernst Jan Bos studies the treatment of severe burning wounds. When an ear is severely damaged, to a deep burning, it is almost impossible to reconstruct the ear with donor cartilage. He developed a method using stem cells and 3D printing techniques to create a new ear. During his research, he ran into the limitations of his 3D printer. And via crowdfunding, he wanted to raise 60,000 euros to buy a new and more advanced 3D printer. What a great cause and what a great story. We were sure it would appeal to many people. We were almost sure this would be a success. And to give you a feeling about this project, I would like to show you their video. It is in Dutch, but I think it gives a good impression. Mijn naam is Erzon Bos en ik ben als artsonderzoeker in de leiding van Paul van Zuilen werkzaam bij de afdeling plastische chirurgie in het Vuurmedisch Centrum. Kraakmin is van essentieel belang voor niet alleen de vorm, maar ook de functie van uw neus en oren. Bij beschadiging, zoals bijvoorbeeld door brand, groeit dit niet meer terug. Ook het aanbod van geschikt kraakbeen voor reconstructie, zoals bijvoorbeeld uit rib, is erg beperkt. Onze onderzoeksgroep werkt aan een oplossing. We zijn op dit moment in het laboratorium al bezig uit kraakbeencellen en stamcellen nieuw kraakbeen te vormen. Het is uiteraard van groot belang dat wij dit nieuw gevormde kraakbeen de juiste driedimensionale vorm kunnen geven, zodat we het kunnen gebruiken voor de reconstructie van neus en oren. Met alle recente ontwikkelingen op het gebied van driedimensionaal printen lijkt het doel sneller binnen handbereik te komen. We willen een speciale scaffold ontwikkelen waarin we de juiste vorm van kraakbeen kunnen laten groeien. Dit doen we met behulp van een gel waarin kraakbeen en stamcellen opgelost zitten. Door deze technieken te combineren kunnen wij in de toekomst hopelijk een menselijk neus of oor reconstrueren voor bijvoorbeeld brandwonde slachtoffers. Met uw donatie via Flintwave kunnen wij een essentieel onderdeel van dit onderzoek uitvoeren. Het maken van een scaffold met behulp van een driedimensionale printer in de vorm van een oor en deze geschikt te maken voor reconstructie. What a great story. Who thinks this is an awesome project? Well, I do also. But till now, we have only raised 1,500 euros uh, with donations. Why, why is that? And what may be even more surprising, the scientists involved in the project consider it a great success. How is that possible? I will give you an answer on both questions. To give you an answer on the first one, let's take a look at the success factors of crowdfunding. The first one is a transparent story. If you have a transparent story and you can show a proof of concept, it really helps for your crowdfund project. In the project Printing New Ears, this is check. The second one, real participation. People like to contribute with their time and with their expertise. If people are really involved in a project, they are much more willing to donate. In this project, real participation is not possible. So this is not a check. The third success factor, factor is the reward. If you contribute to a project in crowdfunding, you get something in return. That's called the reward. If a reward, reward is directly relevant to the target group, it can really boost your campaign and also the amount of money you raise. Very successful crowdfund projects, for example on Kickstarter, are in a way the pre-sale of an innovative product. In our case, we're dealing with research and absolutely not with the pre-sale of an innovation. So there are some interesting rewards 
in this project, but not directly relevant to the target group. So it seems a yes, but actually it's a no. Furthermore, an already existing crowd that you can approach can really help your project forward. It can really help you to um, communicate your message to the masses. The scientists involved in this project are known by some scientific peers, but they absolutely don't have a crowd yet. So this one is a no. The crowdfund project, Printing New Ears, has too few success factors to be a crowdfund success, and indeed it hasn't been. Nevertheless, the scientists involved consider it a great success. How is that possible? Of course, there are some uh, scientific publications about their research, but who reads those? Not me. Because they made their research visible in a new kind of way on our platform, a lot of people now learned about their research. They, they gained a lot of media attention. It started with the university paper, then national radio, and a couple of months ago, even in an Australian magazine. Ernst Bos is asked frequently to talk for different lay audiences. After one of these talks, he was approached by a professor from another university, a professor in industrial design. And now this resulted in them teaming up. And now together they are improving the design of the structure of the printed ear. And there's more. We were approached by a company uh, with, with 3D printing. They wanted to uh, collaborate with the scientists. And now they are working to get together. The scientists can use their 3D printers and can uh, benefit from their expertise. The Burns Foundation also joined the project. They even nominated it for an innovation award. And they are in the finals now. And if they win, they get 50,000 euros. So Ernst Bosch can almost go shopping for his own 3D printer. And that's not all. Because a year ago, there were five scientists at the FU Medical Center where he works who, want, who wanted to buy a printer like this. Now, a year later, this group is 25 researchers. So internally and externally, the project Printing New Ears has gained much more support than was the case a year ago. Obviously, all these different factors help forward the project. <coughs> Projects like these made us realize that the success of a scientific crowdfund project doesn't so much depend on the amount of donations collected. It is much more about exposure, new collaborations, and gaining more support for your research. And that's why we are developing our website from a crowdfunding platform into a platform where you can contribute, participate, and benefit from science. A science platform for society. Three months ago, I gave a presentation on the day of the valorization in Amsterdam. It was the first time I spoke in public about my sarcoidosis. I just had had my last checks, and it seems like it, I won't be affected much by it in the future. After the presentation, somebody came up to me. He was also diagnosed with sarcoidosis a few years ago, and he had become interested in the disease. He personally knew one of the most renowned professors in this field, and he wanted me to meet her, and so it happened. And now I have frequently contact with this professor. I'm even building her a new website for our foundation that supports the research in sarcoidosis. This professor could answer all my questions. She could bring me in contact with other scientists, and I know what the insights are they're looking into. And what's more, I now can financially support scientists who do research on a topic that really interests me. And I can even contribute with my own expertise. I'm building them a website to help their research forward. Flintwave.com now exists for one year. Every day we bring science and society a little bit closer to each other. Together we create new knowledge. Engage in our story and be part of science. Thank you. <laughs>